Hello and welcome to the iOS XR series and uh, if this is third lesson and today we're going to take a look at uh, protocol OSPF so first of all our topology we have here an ISP north and we're going to configure OSPF uh, process ID 100 in the area 0 so we have PE1, PE2, PE3 and PE4 and we have RR1 and RR2 we're going to configure OSPF in the area 0 between all the connected interfaces across this topology. I try to keep the topology simple so that the focus remains on the actually technology. So we're going to keep it as simple as possible today and um, go through trying to focus on what's the difference between iOS and iOS XR. You will see a lot of functions are similar in the verification but the config will be different when it comes to configuring OSPF. Let's start on PE1 and we're going to configure OSPF on the interface gig 000 and gig 001 connected towards the RR1 and PE2. Let's move on to PE1 and start our config. So we're going to start with a routing process which is 100 we're going to set the router ID to 10001 and we're going to set the area 0 and then interface under the area so gig 000 and set the network type to point to point similarly with gig 0001 and for the reachability reason we're going to enable OSPF on the loopback interface and set it to passive Now next we're going to move on to uh, PE2 which is our router just below that and we're going to go ahead and enable OSPF on again on two interfaces towards the core. So I'm going to repeat the config um, on each router. We could uh, use the notepad but I want uh, you to get used to the uh, config, uh, typing the config at least for the first few tasks and then we can always use notepad. So let's uh, going to repeat again um, router OSPF 100 set the router ID. I like to use a process once you use a process you always do the config error free. So we're going to use the same step in all the configs. So therefore it's easy for us to remember and easy to configure when it comes to configuring any protocol or technology on a relatively complex um, topology therefore having a setup and a process steps always helps. So next we're going to move to the PE3 which is the PE on the right hand side and we're going to go ahead and repeat the process again. In iOS XR we know that uh, in addition to uh, the config we have to commit the config to write the um, candidate config into the running config that we have covered in our first lesson earlier in the first video in the iOS XR series. So again we're going to enable the interfaces into the OSPF including the loopback interface we're going to set it to passive and the conf commit the config and then end. Next is PE4 and then we're going to start the config on PE4. Now again we're going to go under the routing process of OSPF and we're using a process ID of 100 and we're going to use a loopback again as a router ID go under the area 0 then use the interface and point to point. So basically in hierarchical config of iOS XR the most identified inside a specific config takes precedence so therefore we're going to use the area first then interface and then config. So next we're going to go to the RR1. RR1 has three interfaces uh, inside the core so we're going to go ahead and configure OSPF on three interfaces. Same again we're going to go under the routing process of 100. We're going to set the router ID to the loopback IP which is 10.0.0.5. Set the area to 0. Enable the OSPF for the interfaces that we need to enable. 
and for this video we're setting the network point uh, network type to point to point loopback will be including for the reachability purpose we're going to con commit the config and then move on to rr2 It's a lot of repetition and we could use notepad but uh, and because we're trying to learn iOS XR so I want this repetition so that we get used to um, the config of iOS XR. So let's go again and enable router OSPF 100, set the router ID, enable the area. The interface is going to be enabled under area 0 for RR2 are going to be gig 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 0, 0, 0002. The network type is point to point and finally loopback 0 interface will be enabled in the OSPF as a passive. Wonderful. Let's now move to the verification. We're going to start with show OSPF interface brief. This output gives us indication that on which interfaces the OSPF is enabled on PE1. So first of all, we see the loopback 0 is enabled for SPF. Process ID is 100. Area is 0. The IP address of the loopback 0 is 10.0.0.1. Cost is 1 and state is loopback. The next interface and the OSPF is enabled on the PE1 is gig 0000 and similarly process ID and areas are same and we have the IP address of 10111 slash 24 and finally gig 0001. Next take a look at uh, show OSPF neighbors and we see that on PE1 we have two adjacencies the first one is neighbor ID of 10.0.0.5 that is RR1 and state is full you have the dead timers and address of the neighbor interface via gig 0.0.0.0.1 and the next neighbor is 10.0.0.2 and that is a PE2 and the state is full we have the timers the IP address and the interface we have, we have received the neighborship. Next, we're going to use show OSPF interfaces. This output gives us some addition information in addition to show OSPF interface brief. We see that for the gig 0000, we have the usual information of process ID, router ID. We also see network type is point to point. We can also see hello and dead timers in this output and MTU and etc. So always use a show OSPF interfaces to see the additional um, details likes of in future if you're using authentication and etc that will be available in this output. Next we're going to have a look at uh, show route OSPF. We see that the PE1 has received connected and loopback interfaces from the other routers in the area. The area Route type is O, which is intra area 10.0.0.2.3.4.5 and 6. All loopback, loopback interfaces have been received via the protocol OSPF in the PE1's routing table. As I'm having lots of hiccups today, <laughs> next we're going to move to PE2 and repeat the verification process. Similarly, we have done on PE1. So we, first of all, we take a look at show OSPF interfaces brief and show OSPF neighbors. The both verification command verify the details I discussed before. We know the interface is enabled for OSPF. And finally, we take a look at routing table using a slightly different command. We're going to continue on our verification moving on to PE3. There's a lot of repetition as I said before but that's the way to understand and verify technologies is repeat things over and over again until you become really good at it. I could use editing and remove repetition but this will allow us to verify a process over and over again and that's what makes us better in understanding and configuring technologies on a regular basis. So we're going to move to the PE4 and show OSPF interface brief. 
verifies that on PE4, three interfaces are part of the OSPF process and the adjacency are up and we're using show OSPF neighbors for that. We're going to verify the routing protocol by using show route OSPF and then we're going to move to RR1. Similarly, repeat the process again of show OSPF interface is brief, verifying that the interfaces required are in, under the OSPF. Next is the neighbor. In here we see that RR1 has three interfaces connected into the core, hence we'll see three adjacencies for OSPF. Loopback 0 and 3 gig interfaces of RR1 are configured for the OSPF. Next, we're going to take a look at our final router in the topology that is RR2. Show OSPF interface brief gives us, confirms that in OSPF is enabled on four interfaces. Show OSPF neighbor confirms again that the adjacencies are up and finally we see the routing table by using show route OSPF. And finally we're going to log on to PE1 and see if we can reach all the other devices in the topology using ICMP. They are PE2, PE3, PE4, RR1 and RR2. Let's start the ICMP reachability test from PE1 to PE2, PE3, PE4, RR1 and RR2. And next we're going to take a look at the OSPF database by using command show OSPF database. Due to intra-area topology, we see that in the OSPF database, we have router link state. All the LSAs are there in the area 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And we have some additional information of age and sequ sequence number and etc. I hope that has been informative. If you like the video, please subscribe and leave your comments. And I look forward to see you in the next video of iOS XR series. Thank you for watching.